Hello YouTube, this is Gamer Delta, and this is the second part of the what I bought at the Barnes & Noble. The, uh, this is the second video we're going to be looking at this uh, Doctor Who microfigure set. The first video, I reviewed the LEGO Minecraft Micro World set. Now we'll be looking at this one. For those of you who don't know who Doctor, the Doctor Who character is, he's basically a time-traveling alien. That's a, I think, I think he's alien, he's from another world, but he can travel, uh, he ha basically has adventures through time and space using his uh, time machine called the TARDIS, which is this uh, pl little police box it's disguised as. It's uh, It just looks like a regular, one of the really old school police boxes that they used for phoning in calls to the station and whatnot. But uh, it's actually on the inside, it's a huge, uh, just a huge time machine, which is pretty nice, pretty neat. But um, I believe the it's actually classified as a sci-fi adventure drama, which is kind of weird. But this is a uh, very popular British television show. This is not aired in America. It's published by a, B, a company called BBC, which has uh, had the show running ever since the 1960s, which I believe it started. And since then, um, there have been 11 different actors that have played the Doctor Who character, which is what the set is about. It is about uh, the includes all eleven incarnations of the Doctor, which is all um, of the actors who portrayed him. Basically, uh, the Doctor can uh, I guess when he's near death or dying or whatever he can reincarnate himself into a different face, a different person. Well, not a completely different person. The Doctor Who is the same character throughout. He just has a uh, he still retains his memories and or at least some of his memories and his experiences and whatnot. But he just takes on a different form and a different person, sort of. But uh, yep, this uh, like um, this is basically from the uh, the character Bill set, which is basically one of the Lego knockoffs who have this property. It's still kind of nice, whatever. Not a uh, not um obviously not Lego or Yeah, not Lego quality, but still fairly okay. And I also uh, opened one of the black, blind, the bleh, the blind bags in a previous video where I got a little uh, white dialect character. But anyway, let's open this up and actually see the figures themselves. Anyway, opens up nicely like this. And display, you can see all 11 of the doctors here. Starting from the first all the way to the eleventh, as you can see, they vary very greatly from character to character, ending from the first to the eleventh. And on the flaps here, as you can see, it gives you a small description of each uh, of each different type of uh, personality he has, as well as the actual year it ran. Again, I was right; it began in 1963. And then it still runs to currently today. They're still producing episodes of it. So they're kind of okay, I guess. But uh, many, many different faces. Pretty cool there. Oh, each with a shot of the actor. Very nice. But um, I'm actually going to open this up and uh, set up all 11 Doctors because it does uh, include uh, their display bases as well, which is kind of nice in this box, as well as their uh, weapon of choice, Sonic Screwdriver, in many different forms. But, uh, yep, I'll see you in a second when I set this up. And there you have it. All of the 11 Doctors right there, their incarnations. Standing all upright. Ranging from vastly different to not so much. But, um, anyway, we're going to take a look at all 11 figures here in full. And I will also read the little blurb on the side of the box that uh, also comes with the character. Start off with the first Doctor here. Sort of this uh, old-looking guy. Oh yeah, they also have this uh, the same base, pretty much this the the DW Doctor Who with the TARDIS logo there. Kind of cool there. But anyway, here's the first ever Doctor. So kind of cool. Looks like an, he looks almost like a butler or sort of a. No, actually, yeah, he kind of looks like a butler almost, which is kind of weird, but uh, he actually doesn't have a sonic screwdriver. I'm not sure what's up with that, but anyway, description of him. first, The first Doctor from 1963 to 1966, so only three years he was portrayed, but his uh, description is, The Doctor is a mysterious character from another time and another world. He has a time machine called the TARDIS, which is 
disguised as a police box and is bigger on the inside than on the outside. So a plain description of the character of the Doctor overall. He's pretty much, uh, for the first three years of the series, I guess he was pretty much just a mysterious figure that ran around and did adventures and whatnot and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, just a pretty mysterious character overall. Sort of, but uh, going on, here's the second Doctor. As you can see, there's not really too much other than the fact that uh, he pretty much looks like the uh, who would own the mansion of the, of the uh, who pretty much owned the butler almost. He's just the he has the same black suit, but he's like more shortly dressed and he's a lot younger. He also has uh, well, I'd say the most most basic little piece of uh, metal almost you can imagine, but uh, again, that was a uh, 1960s, but he's the first one to actually use the sonic screwdriver, I'm guessing. But uh, his description, the second Doctor, ran from 1966 to 1969, so again, only three years. Is that trying? I'm not sure. But um, here we go. The first Doctor regenerated whilst battling the Cybermen during the events of the 10th planet and eventually collapsed, exhausted. His body renewed itself and transformed into the second Doctor. The second Doctor's characteristics centered around his ability to mislead his enemies as to the actual threat he posed to their plans. So, I guess this Doctor was a little more forward in fighting the evil. And I guess it's, it's I guess uh, their generation does work pretty much near death, I guess. So... Uh, that's kind of cool. You have a certain number of lives. You can sort of just, you know, prove yourself as another person, which I'll actually uh, get to in a, at the end of this. But um, as to the reason why there's a 11 here, or rather specifically 11, anyway. Some of these are actually hard to get on the base than others, but there's the second Doctor. And the third. Again, a radical change from somewhat to an old guy. He's also got a very radical different coat, just a brown, almost looks like a professor. He also has a different sonic screwdriver as well. As you can see here, more of a sort of high tech, spacey sort of thing. But anyway, the third doctor ran from 1970 to 1974, so about four years. Anyway, exiled to Earth, this sophisticated and elegant doctor was more of a pure scientist than his prisoners. Oh, that's right. Surrounded by gadgets and vehicles, but whether adding units against invasion or traveling to distant planets, his kindness and belief in peace was rarely stronger. Hmm. Alrighty then. So, um... Going a little more of the character, well, rather revealing more of the Doctor's personality. Well, again, the personality varies from character to character, but each time he regenerates, but still. Pretty cool overall, still, not a bad, not a bad Doctor there, it looks like. Although he was exiled to Earth for some reason, so, mm, I don't know, maybe not, who knows. So, third Doctor. On to the fourth, which is probably the most funky looking of them all. So considering he actually has an accessory other than his jacket, he has a scarf. And um, I should also point out that these characters can, uh, like sort of the Legos and Mega Bloks, you can remove their heads and the scarf comes off. You can put it on another character if you want. Same thing with the legs. Yeah. You can take those off too. And I also like how the uh, there's actually a nice coat effect there, along with the shirt. It actually goes down past uh, the uh, the pants there. Makes it look like look like he's wearing um. Doesn't really look like he's sort of wearing half lab coat, half uh, casual Friday wear. Especially with the scarf, that kind of weird. He does have the same sonic, sonic screwdriver as the third Doctor. So I don't know whether that was just passed on, whether he just got that or whatever. And I have actually watched a couple. I've actually watched a Doctor Who episode and a whole bunch of clips of some so. Not too well inverse still, but anyway, going on to the fourth Doctor here from 1974 to 1981, so a much longer jump here. The fourth Doctor masks his brilliance and inventive mind behind the facade of Bohemian Elect... Blah, something. Just a electricity. There is sanctuary. The longest-lived incarnation of the Doctor so far, he was the fourth... 
He was forced to change his body after losing a fight with his old enemy, the Master, and falling from a radio telescope to the ground beneath him. So, that's also one of the... Uh, there, oh, there's a bunch of monsters and stuff he fights, but I guess his arch rival is actually called the Master, which is another um, time more like he is. But... Anyway, this is a much rat. It's probably the... I don't know. He kind of looks... Not really the coolest in my opinion, but um, probably a second runner up there. Kind of like him. Moving on, here is the fifth doctor. Fifth doctor looks a lot more professory like, almost like a sci actual scientist, but a little younger than third doctor. He has a different, um, different sonic screwdriver. This one's a little more. A little more, just about shorter and whatnot, that's about it. Not too much going on there. But, uh, yeah, I'll just get one soon. There's not really. Anyway, his bio here for the Fifth Doctor. The Fifth Doctor ran from 1982 to 1984, so only two years, probably the shortest, I think. His youthful parents believed his little his wisdom and experience but this doctor still found it frustrating that so many people questioned his judgment especially his companions while on an alien planet he and his companions his companion Perry contrasted a disease and the doctor gave Perry the only cure necessitating another reincarnation so how generous on this one was save one of his many companions that he had. Moving on to the sixth doctor. The sixth doctor, he's uh, again, kind of the weird odd blonde poofy hair there. But uh, this one is also the, one of the only two that doesn't have a sonic screwdriver. I'm not sure why that is, but he's also got a really funky coat. He's sort of got a green line, he's got a green liner going down his jacket there, and then a yellow one going down here. I'm read his bio and try to find out what that's all about here. Going up to the sixth doctor from 1984 1986. The loud, boastful, and colorful, this extravagant doctor hid his vulnerability and caring nature behind a boastful mask of alien disturbance. After once again being put on trial by the Time Lords, the doctor's TARDIS was shot out of the skies by his old enemy, the Rian, and the subsequent crash triggered a regeneration. So... I guess uh, he's been on the run from his. Uh, it's been noted that he's been on the run from his uh, own kind for some reason. I'm not sure what he did, but somehow they're still able to find him, even though his appearance drastically changed for some odd reason. But moving on to the seventh Doctor here, as you can see, he actually doesn't have a sonic. Or it might be, but uh, he actually has a umbrella. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be disguised as a. It's not extruded or not, but he looks pretty much like a... Oh, uh, yeah, he actually, I guess he uh, stole some, uh, some of his fashion sense from the Riddler because it's kind of hard to see, but he's actually got question marks going all down his shirt there, which is kind of weird. But he looks more like a... almost just like an average Joe rather than anybody you suspect. Well, then again, I don't know that I was an alien to anybody, but... Looks like almost like a mobster type. Anyway, the Seventh Doctor from 1987 to 1996. So, basically, uh, this is the one I would have seen if I watched it since the day I was born. I would have saw this Doctor first. But, uh, Mercule and highly moral, highly moral, this Doctor would often disappear at the cruelty and wastefulness he encounters across the galaxies. On a trip to America in 1999, he was accidentally gunned down by a street gang and taken to the hospital, where the, where the prosecutors taken to try and save him did the reverse and he seemingly died, only to be regenerated within the hospital's morgue. It's kind of creepy, but that was more of a... This one actually doesn't look more like his in-game shot. He looks more like Al Capone, sort of, in his uh, screenshot of the actual character that portrays him, but still not too bad. So he's pretty much a mobster type person? That's kind of... <laughs> that one's kind of weird. So, oop, there it is. 
These ones don't want to stand straight for some reason. I don't want to line up too well. Give him back his umbrella. Yeah, very interesting how uh, differently each doctor is portrayed, even though he technically has the same memories. And I don't think it's all the memories, but uh, enough to remember some of his past experiences. Anyway, moving on to the eighth doctor, who looks. Oh, uh, he kind of looks like Snape from uh, the Harry Potter series. It's kind of weird. Anyway, he's got, uh, got his actual sonic screwdriver back there instead of his cape. And he just looks like a sort of a businessman kind of guy with a uh, mullet hair going there. Anyway, for the eighth doctor. He was only in 1986, up to 2004, I believe. The passionate about life and the beauty of the world about him, this doctor's love of humanity drove him to fight his old foe, the master deep within the heart of his own TARDIS. Okay. It, remi it remains unclear when, how, or why exactly he regenerated into his ninth body, but he had clearly done so shortly before meeting Rose Tyler on Earth. Hmm. So again, another another quip about uh, this master person, or I guess his arch nemesis, but huh. Actually, I'll exp that might contribute to my theory I have at the end of this video, but moving on. We have the tenth. There, this is the ninth Doctor we have here, and he's probably the oddest looking one of the uh, out of the bunch because he does looks nothing. He looks he looks like a, almost like a, the Fawns sort of, or the cool guy from the seventies with the the slick back black hair and and the uh, the leather jacket. I don't think it's supposed to be a leather jacket, but anyway, he still has a sonic screwdriver. So he has has a newer design sort of short a little bit but anyway for the ninth doctor here that ran from uh, 2005 and uh, that was the only one he was in actually yep it's from 2005 so about a year hmm. the ninth doctor was plain spoken and didn't suffer fool fools gallied in spite of this he still had an irrespectable curiosity and unmistakable alien outlook which allowed him to charm and buggle his friends and foes alike. After a fantastic series of adventures, the Doctor saved his companion, Rosa Tyler, by absorbing the time vortex from her, causing him to regenerate. So, another self-sacrifice there for a cool-looking dude. It was a cool-looking version of the Doctor, I guess. Anyway. Sorry, I hate how these are off-centered. I don't want to stand on the bases too well. For some reason. There we go. There, that's better. Now he doesn't want to stand on the base that well. Why not, you ask? Not sure. Going on to the tenth doctor here. He has the same sonic screwdriver as the last guy, and is basically somewhat looking of a businessman with the shirt there and the tie. But he has on, um, looks like just, uh, you know, normal tennis shoes. Kind of just an average Joe looking, looking man there. Anyway, going on to the, the Tenth Doctor from 2005 to 2009. The Tenth Doctor had a bright, sparky personality, yet he rarely gave second chances to his foes, mm, more aggressive, following a cataclysmic encounter with his own people, mm, he gave his own life to save that of Williford Mott, absorbing radiation that would have proven fatal to his old friend, again on the self-sacrifice. Huh. Sounds not like he resonates from being a dick to being a, to being a very peaceful person. Very odd fly. I don't know. Kind of weird, but uh, he was able to s stave off the regeneration process long enough to bid farewell to his past companions and reach sa the safety of the TARDIS, where the Doctor began to regenerate. Alone. 
It's also one of the recurring themes is that he seems to lose his. Uh, every doctor has some different companions or whatever, and they see, I guess they seem to die or well, not die. He just loses them in some horrible way. I guess it's also why it's part drama too, because as of this recording, the uh, I think the new I don't think there's a new doctor anywhere any time soon, but the new season. Um, he lost his companions again, I guess, to um, one of the creepier, the creepier monsters he faced, which is called the uh, Weeping Angels. But uh, yeah, there's that, and then I guess he might obtain a new look or something. Not a complete generation, not sure. But anyway, he seems like yeah, not too bad of a guy, I guess. He seems to have a very rough past. Uh, very aggressive to his own people for some odd reason. I don't know, maybe they're actually maybe they're actually evil and he's the only good one for some reason. Don't know. But uh they get another self sacrifice there. So he is somewhat of a good guy at least. But anyway, moving on to the final and recent doctor here, we have the eleventh doctor, which I'm sure probably everyone knows. Or probably the least familiar with now, at least in America. He has a a newly designed sonic screwdriver, which is the shortest, but actually looks almost like a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm sure that was done on purpose, but whatever. Anyway, the final doctor, the 11th one, which is 2010 to current, at least right now, anyway. The 11th doctor saw off not one, but two alien threats, and that's almost as soon as he crash landed to Earth. His new companion, Amy Pond, first met him when, he sh when she was seven years old, and while he was when, and while he was clad in the raggedy romance of the Tenth Doctor suit, so not too much there other than the beginnings of his tale, because again it's an ongoing series. But again, like I said, as of uh, this is 2013 January, so I'm not sure if this is really the end of his tale. But he lost his companions, so I'm not sure if that means he's going to lose himself and go to his thirteenth form or not, or the twelfth form. Sorry, but um. But yeah, that's uh, basically the story on the 11th Doctor so far. And there you have it. There are all the 11 incarna current incarnations of the Doctor. Very, very cool. I do like... Uh, it seems like there are many, even though he's portrayed as only one character, at least he's supposed to be. Still, it's nice to see almost uh, a vast array of uh, different faces and... Just overall, it is a really nice collection for anybody who wants uh, this particular Doctor Who set, who's fond of, uh, who might have, who was, uh, might have seen the, from the very first episodes to now. Which um, also, by the way, I like the, uh, the Lego set, which was uh, thirty-four ninety-five, pretty expensive. Guess how much this one was? This one was thirty-nine nine ninety-five. So that was, so this is actually five dollars more expensive than the Lego set, which again I think is way overpriced. Bastards, but um, oh well, everything in Burn the Noble is uh, pretty damn expensive, but anyway, there is the uh, the Doctor Who 11 Doctor incarnation set there from uh, character building. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.